Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel! As you can see this week, I decided to opt for a very subtle look. I don't know what happened, but suddenly I had a bold red lip, a winged uh, yellow sparkly eyeliner, and these amazing nails. Can you see the nails? Da -da -da -da. Pretty cool, huh? The flames! <laughs> Gotta love the flame nails! So today we'll be addressing the rumors that tattoos can uh, boost your immune system. So we'll be addressing that and see if that is actually science-based with facts, evidence, is it? So I actually found next to nothing, if not nothing actually, uh, not only on, on the subject but mostly serious things on the subject here on YouTube and almost next to nothing even on the internet in the articles I was reading. So I decided to roll up my sleeves and get to work. First thing is that I will be looking this way a lot in this video because I have all my notes. Make sure to have a lot of notes because this is a very scientific topic. So if I'm looking this way, it's because I'm looking at the facts that I've written here. And I have a disclaimer also, which is that I am not either a statistician or qualified in hard sciences. I will tell you my background just so you know. I have a bachelor's degree in social science. I am very interested into statistics and hard science such as biology for example, human biology uh, to be specific, but I am not qualified in medicine or human biology so I don't have credentials about that. I have basic math courses and stats courses, some economic courses and a lot of political science courses uh, and I love science and I love to read scientific papers so that's what I've done today. Um, for you. So you might have seen uh, the article, some articles on the internet saying bold statements like tattoos can boost your immune system so go ahead and get tattoos as much as you want which is cute, sensationalist at best but is not exactly what the science actually says. So I will tell you first and foremost to be very careful about the information you find on the internet. So a lot of the, these articles actually lack nuance. Apparently some of the people who have written these articles, and maybe you can see I'm a bit mad about it, they haven't actually looked at the study on which these bold statements were said and that pisses me off. So I actually went for it and read said study for you guys and for me, personal knowledge as well, very important. So I read it to actually see what science actually says on the subject. So the source of this bold statement is mainly one study, just one. <laughs> uh, I have tried to find other studies on this subject and there is nothing. So the study is called, entitled, Tattooing to Toughen Up, Tattoo Experience and Secretory Immunoglobin A by Christopher D. Lynn, Joanna T. Dominguez and Jason A. DeCaro from, that is important, the Department of Anthropology at the University of Alabama in 2016. Why I say that anthropology, Department of Anthropology is pretty important is that it is not, first and foremost, it was not made for medicine purposes or human biology purposes only. It was, the, they were conducting a main study on women and cultural, uh, a cultural study on women and tattooing. I'm sorry if I, I'm not saying that correctly. I did not go wa see all the details about the other studies that they've made, but uh, they were conducting that and they thought that it was a good idea to do this study as well. So we'll go uh, into detail into uh, this study to see what they actually said, what they have found. So first off, we will start with the parameters of the study and also the limits uh, to the research. So what were they actually studying? 
they were studying uh, the levels of tattooing on immunoglobulin A, which is an indicator of an immunity response, and cortisol levels, which is your stress response, uh, before and after tattoo sessions at three different parlors. And one thing that is good is that they looked at the difference between people with a higher body percentage covered in tattoos and more tattoo sessions uh, in their lives and people who were getting their first or uh, for, not first tattoo only, but that were less tattooed. We will also look at the sample size, which is very important. So the study is conducted on actually 29 people which is pretty small. In my opinion, these people can have varying underlying pre-existing conditions as you might have heard this term during the pandemic. Um, so yeah, but uh, as I've seen in an article, good article, uh, written by Sabrina Sterwald, don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, but uh, she was saying that it can be a bias because most of people who actually go to get tattoos are mostly all healthy. So in any case, they didn't look at pre-existing conditions and people seemed to all be very healthy. So yeah, this sample size is very small, very limited, 29 people. Could this be generalized to the whole population? I do not think so. For example, if you, we just wanted to look at the population of Alabama, for example, which is for about 4.9 million people, we would need, according to this little calculator here, about 385 uh, test subjects for us to have an accuracy of 95%. So, we are not at this accuracy rate, that's for sure, with our little, 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 little sample of 29 people. Good thing is that the people who have done this study at the end of the study, uh, they say that they know it's a small sample and more research needs to be done, which is good. There's also another thing that I noted, which is uh, because they were doing um, tests on women for cultural studies, um, there's a very, very big gender disproportion in this study. So they looked at 24 women and five men which means 83% of subjects were women and 17% were men. So there's a very big disproportion here in terms of gender because the general population were about 50-50. I think women are 51% of the population of the world and men 49 if I'm not mistaken. It is about 50-50. So we're pretty far of this 50-50 here. And what I think is pretty funny is that in most studies in medicine that I've seen in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's mostly the opposite. Which uh, Generally the studies are mo mostly done on men and then generalized to everybody. And this is ex exactly the opposite. In any case, both are wrong in my opinion. Uh, we need a sample that would be representative of a society doesn't mean that there's a difference in the immune response between men and women but if there is we would be able to know if the sample was 50 50 and bigger interesting data that we don't have that we'll we won't get with this study maybe with future studies so uh last thing in terms of uh just the parameters of the study is the duration so duration is pretty limited. It's been done on a couple of months. So from May to December 2012, which is not a very longitudinal study. So if we would like to know the effects of immunity, immunity of tattooing in the long term, um, it would be best to have maybe a bit longer time studied. Though, as I've said before, they have looked at uh, how heavily tattooed people actually were beforehand, which could include the time passed before, which is kind of nice. Okay. As you see, it is a very sciencey video today. So if you like this information, please give a thumbs up to this video. Maybe share it with your friends uh, if you like the information you see here. Now we look at the hypothesis and this is where everything uh, is getting 
together. So um, the hypothesis of the study, if you don't know, in science you first start with a hypothesis based on what you've read before on, on some subjects similar to the subject that you're talking about. So you conduct a hypothesis, you say we think that this will happen and then with your tests you show, you either confirm the hypothesis or precise things that go against the hypothesis so you, you could change, uh, the result could be different than what you thought uh, at first. So, hypothesis of the study was, I'll just read it because it's gonna be more simple and I'm gonna change a, a few words just to make it more simple, um, but it's gonna stay the same regardless. This model suggests tattooing inoculates the immune system to heightened vigilance against stressors associated with soft tissue damage. We sought to investigate this inoculation hypothesis uh, of tattooing as a signal of fitness. We hypothesized that the immune system habituates to the tattooing stressor in repeatedly tattooed individuals and that immune response to the stress of the tattooing process would correlate with lifetime tattoo experience. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And is it talking about the flu? It is not, <laughs> as you can see. So uh, they haven't investigated as could this immune response, heightened immune response that you would get from getting tattooed, for example, uh, could help you, um, I don't know, against the flu or cold. I will not tell the name Voldemort because I don't want this video to be flagged as this type of information, you know what I mean? So yeah, they didn't talk about any viruses or things like that, just so you know. So if you see uh, tattoos can prevent the common cold, uh. wrong. This is not even talking about the common cold. So you have to be very careful about the information you find on the internet. And what I hate is that some of these people who wrote some articles have not read said study and so they say things from another thing that they've read and another thing that they've read and somebody somewhere has looked at the study and took pieces to make it a se something sensation sensational sensational on the internet and then information gets diluted so yeah they are very precise the scientifics here about they talk about heightened vigilant heightened vigilance against stressors associated with soft tissue damage we are talking about stressors associated with soft tissue damage so also an immune response to soft tissue damage which is the process of being tattooed so they're not talking about the flu now, let's jump right into the conclusion of the study. You could end the video there if you'd like, but I have a lot of other interesting things to say. This video will be long. So, uh, the conclusion says, our data suggests that the body habituates over time to the tattooing stressor. It is possible that individuals with healthy immune systems heal faster, making them more likely to get multiple tattoos. Also, note that it is possible they do not say it absolutely is and they also in this in the study said that we know it's just 29 people we know it's a small sample size so what they mean is that this subject needs more more research fortunately there's no research on the subject since 2016 wished that there would be so they compared the act of being tattooed to uh, some stressors such as intense physical activity or any type of um, long-term uh, stress exposure. So for example, negative mood, which has an impact and that has been found. I'm gonna link a study down below. There's a lot of study on, on that though, on the effects of long-term stress or even short-term stress on the immune response uh, overall, which that is interesting. But of course, tattooing is a stressor that is on a short period of time. Um, and they're looking at if this stressor um, is repeated, uh, then what happens? They noted that there's an effect of immunosuppression, which means that your body uh, immunity levels uh, decrease when you get tattooed. 
so at the time that you get tattooed and then after uh, you are done being tattooed they say it's not very clear when they say if uh, if it's after the session they seem to say 30 to 60 minutes after the session but it's not very clear if they mean after the session or after the tattooing has started but i guess they mean after the session then your immunity response goes back up and even over your base level so at first you were there then it declines then whoop your body goes back up over here so that's what they found that is very interesting and that's the effect of boosting immunity that we see so you have a stressor that will actually decrease your immunity response and then help it go back up for the healing process of course to to start and when i say immunity levels just so you know it's immunoglobin a that they tested okay that's what is very interesting about this Given that tattooing sessions last long enough for the immunosuppressive phase of the stress response to be engaged by the end of the session, we would generally expect people undergoing the acute stress of tattooing to show signs of immunosuppression immediately upon completion of a tattooing session. But, as research demonstrates, that exposure to repeated stressors can result in an Im immune response habituation. We predict less immunosuppression amongst individuals with more tattoo experience. So, they also say that they noted uh, a positive correlation, so a link both things are going in the same way positive correlation means two things are are correlated and uh, don't don't go oppositely they are linked you know what i mean i'm not a teacher okay i'm doing my best here so they noted a link in between the levels of immunoglobin a of participants after the test and their percentage of body covered the immunosuppression effect was lesser in people who have had a lot of tattoos before so more of their body is covered so the this effect that was going down and then back up instead it, it was going down but less than others so they also noted a significant inverse correlation so two things are going in the opposite so instead of being linked and going together they are um, less and less linked so it's a correlation but inverted so a significant inverse correlation between immunoglobulin a change change so less change and the number of sessions tattooed how we're tattooed percentage of body tattooed and total tattoo experience so there was less change in your immunity you know the one that we were talking about going down going back up this was changing less uh, the more you were getting tattooed so your body was like oh i know this so i'm not going to react as much the more the more it gets used to uh, tattooing also fun fact here uh, they measured the alcohol and tobacco levels of the participants which is very interesting still too small 29 people but okay and they noted an increase in cortisol level of those who used alcohol in the 24 hours before getting tattooed in the 24 hours so it doesn't mean getting drunk and then getting tattooed of course but yeah that means uh, maybe a glass of wine the night before uh could mean you will be more stressed in your tattoo session just so you know fyi pertinent information nice information for you to know they also say at some point in the study they say tattooing may stimulate the immune system in a manner similar to a vaccination to be less susceptible to future pathogenic infiltration very very interesting a line that could be used and misused as well so as you know because we've had a pandemic going on but as you know vaccines work for certain viruses as well so the flu shot that you get every every year actually targets specific flu strains every year that the epidemiologists i cannot say that word but those people uh think that will be the the flu um strains that will be the more popular this year so you get a flu shot for these strains there are other flu strains that exist but they 
in that year they think uh, according to their models that this will these will be the more popular for the season coming same thing for the co that I will not name. Same thing for it. So we've had uh, a vaccine that has been done for a specific strain of this virus uh, recently. So same thing here. They say that tattooing may stimulate the immune system in a manner similar to vaccination to be very precise for tattooing, for the tattooing process immune response to the tattooing process which they have also said prior in the hypothesis it's the tattooing process that we're looking at they haven't tried to inoculate the flu on tattooed people they also seem to have considered age which is nice i will say it again but still 29 people is not enough to for me to get to any valuable conclusion but um if you want to read the study i will link it down below just so you know it's you need to pay for it which is <sighs> gatekeeping in the scientific community um and university community uh researchers i hate that i have had access to it because of my university but um yeah if you really want to read it you can go but you need to pay or if you have a university access or your friend has just use that because i hate it's really important information and i know that it can be very hard to read for a lot of people um but i think that people getting access to research is important like the base research because then the journalists that do not want to pay it's not in their budget uh will write things i guess it's in their budget i guess that they have access to research like they have these research websites and stuff publishings um i don't know why uh, some journalists just don't look at it in uh, the article that i talked to you about previously um that was written by sabrina steierwald Steinwald uh, in Scientific American, she points out something that really resonates with me. She says, of course, we can only talk about possible health benefits for tattoos if we if we are talking in the context of ink applied via clean and sterile sterile tattoo equipment, which I think is really interesting because um, we are talking about tattoos boosting the immune system. Aha, uh -huh, cute, cute. But the tattooing in, in and of itself is a risk of infection because you are creating a wound into the skin. So if you are already willing to take the risk that is involved with tattoos, that could be higher for some, more minimal for some. You could have allergic reactions to some inks. There's always some risk involved into such a procedure. So if you're already willing to take the risk and you think that, you know, it might boost my immune response to tattooing with more tattoos and that's what you want, which actually I, I actually like to know. I think it's very cool if my body can habituate and have some good this can have some good effect on my long-term immunity to tattoos uh i think this is nice because i want a lot of tattoos so if you're like me and you're like i want to get my whole body covered uh well that is great news um if that is of course repeated because as we've seen there's some limits to the study but it seems to be a, a, a valuable hypothesis so it's nice so if you are already willing to take the risk cool if you were looking at all these articles and say i need to get a tattoo because i need better immunity uh. <laughs> Don't do that. Just don't. And if you are immunosuppressed, of course, uh, because of other reasons, um, it, it is not recommended for you to get a tattoo first and foremost. So if you have a weakened immune uh, system, it's, it's not the way to go. Not the way to go. And I hate to break it to you. I mean, you people who actually have uh, very bad immunity, 
that are immunodepressed or immunosuppressed already know it and already know the risks because they have been told a lot by healthcare practitioners uh, and those of us who are like I just get the flu very often like it doesn't mean your immunity is that bad it might just mean that you are in contact with a lot of people who have the flu um, <laughs> but yeah so maybe that's not actually the way to go sorry so yeah, most young adults have actually very good immune systems already and if you really want to improve your immune system, uh, you know what to do. <laughs> You've seen it everywhere. You can eat good vegetables and eat well and make exercise, which is good as well. And another thing that you could do is to get your vaccines. So I have been vaccinated against a lot of things. Um, I've had, I have the flu vaccine every year because of my asthma. Um, sometimes I forget, but most years I do. Um, other vaccines as the COVID one, of course. Um, I've had a lot of things like uh, smallpox and all of those when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't have smallpox because I was vaccinated. If you want to get your body to work for you, then there's different ways of inoculating, as they say in the study, a defense already. And then your body habituates to uh, the stressor or the virus. And then in the future, it gets better. So it's very interesting, very interesting study. Um, very interesting to know that maybe your body can habituate over time and heal better even maybe uh, in the future to tattoos. Who knows? Um, so that's nice. So that's my video for today. It was a lot of information. I hope it provided you with some answers because uh, I really hope that this is much better than everything I've seen on the internet, most things I've seen on the internet because there's a lot of anecdotal evidence. Do you know what is anecdotal evidence? Like, I experienced this. Okay, we don't care. We need a whole study on subjects with parameters, as I said. And um, I experienced this. I have less the flu. I have... This is not scientific information. It could, anecdotal evidence could lead us to um, want to research, but uh, your friend saying uh, they're heavily tattooed and get less the flu with time does not mean that uh, the immune response to the flu w is heightened by getting more tattoos. I am sorry. So that is the video for today. If you liked it, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this content, this information, share it, share it, share it. Um, and please subscribe. See you next week.